Okay, so one of our group members asked me a question. He didn't ask me to do a video, actually. He asked me a question or asked the group a question about kind of life-changing books. Um, I'm super into self-improvement books. and I'm, I'm super into books, first of all. Anybody who knows me knows that I'm very serious about reading. I love to read. I love libraries. I love bookstores. And in fact, one of my favorite t-shirts that I have on today um, says bookstore and chill. So back in the day when I was in the States and dating, uh, my favorite place to go on a date was a bookstore. Um, and a lot of my ex-boyfriends can attest to that. So, um, But I wanted to do, I told him I would do a video to answer the question uh, because it's one of my favorite topics. So I figured why not share the information with everybody. Um, the other thing I like to tell people, there's two things, um, that I tell people, and I don't want this to come across judgmental. This is just my own personal preference because I love books. That's just me. Um, I don't watch TV and I think that has a lot to do with just my upbringing. Um, a lot of times when I was a child, we didn't have a TV. And so, uh, we were kind of encouraged or pushed to come up with other ways to entertain ourselves. So we would write stories, we would create songs, dance routines, I mean, all kinds of stuff just to pass the time. Um, and the other thing that my mom would do is she would um, make us read books and then talk about them, talk about what we learned from them. So um, that's one of the, the good habits that I acquired over the years during my childhood. And um, one of the things that I plan to pass on to my son. And so one of the things I'm just super passionate about is reading and learning from what I read. So the second, that leads me to the second thing. Um, I don't read fiction and people will get really kind of confused when I say that, like you love to read, but you don't read fiction. How does that work? Um, and I think that's just because it go, kind of goes back to not watching much TV. Uh, I don't really like investing in things that don't invest in me. You might hear me say that in different venues, different um, arenas, because that's one of my favorite quotes. I really like investing in myself. And I think that's why my favorite topic when it comes to book is self-improvement because what better to invest in? What better to spend your time, your resources, your money than yourself? And so um, I have a couple books here. I have, if you go into my guest room, I have like three huge bookshelves of books. It's not very tidy or organized, so I won't show you guys that today. But um, I have like, he said, he asked for a top five. And I couldn't narrow it down to five, but I have my top 10 favorite books, if you will. Um, and then I'll try to narrow it down to about six or seven that I just absolutely love, that I feel like I've gained so much from, um, and go from there. So, one of the ones that I really had heard a lot about and found very interesting is um, How to Win Friends and Influence People. To be honest, this book really didn't do much for me, but I think that's just because like emotional intelligence is very natural kind of thing for me. Um, so it did confirm some stuff, but it just wasn't very eye-opening as people said it would be. Um, and I think simply just because of the nature of what we do, um, you, when you love people, a lot of this was kind of like, well, duh. Um, but I've been told that this is like a must-have for business. Um, you know, how to understand people and how to relate to them and um, understand how they relate to you and why. So I thought that was a good book to point out tonight. Um, the other book that's been really, really helpful for me lately is uh, particularly a journal, The Purpose Driven Life Journal. Um, everybody knows or should know by now that I'm a very faith-based person. So I feel like this has been really helpful in making sure that I'm walking the walk and that my business is in line with my purpose for life and that I'm doing things that are pleasing to God. So that's very important to me. Um, I have the book as well as the journal. So this is one of my favorite companions, if you will, um, sets. Uh, let's see what's next. I have another journal. Um, this is um, a product from a company called Knock Knock. And I'm planning to reach out to them to see if we can do like a group discount of some sort. Um, but if you look at this journal, it says it's going to be okay. A journal to reassure myself when I'm overwhelmed by the creepy, creeping sense of impending 
disaster and all-encompassing fears, both specified and vague, that colonize my mind, body, and soul, all of which, from the completely far reps to the sometimes probable, do me no good to contemplate, in fact, make me miserable. And even though optimism may be unself-aware and ill-placed, I know I'll be happier as a blind fool. Um, so... This is one of the books that I write in from time to time. What I like about it, uh, I'm going to show you guys all my secrets and maybe I will one day. Uh, fear tastes like a rusty knife and do not let her into your house. <laughs> um, optimism, daydreamer, more elegantly spelled. Um, so it has like quotes in it. Trust yourself. You know more than you think you do. I agree with that one wholeheartedly. Um, but it has a lot of good quotes in it so that you can kind of focus your frustrations, anxieties, fears, when you're writing. So I love these. They have tons of them. Um, and now I noticed the website actually has mini versions. Um, I should have brought the pad down here. I also have, they have a self therapy pad, which I love. I might show that to you guys later in the video. Um, but they have a lot of great things that I think therapists would just love. So this is kind of like the anxiety book. The inner truth journal is what it's called. Um, but uh, they have several of them that are just really witty and fun and thought-provoking all at the same time which I'm a fan of that so um now getting down to some of my favorites which is like I said it was hard for me to narrow down I will say my most recent favorite too okay yeah I'll go with this one this book right here let me tell you everybody needs a copy of this book that's just my opinion um I've Highly, highly recommended it to clients. They came back and said, I'm on it. I'm working it. This changed my life. You were absolutely right about this book. Um, and I, that's just from me giving them the review of the book um, that you can find on Amazon. But it's uh, kind of like a version. I guess there's the, another version of the, or not really a version. A previous author wrote a book called The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up. And it's all about how we clutter our mind and that leads to cluttering your spaces as far as your house, your closet, your office. Um, this book, The Life-Changing Magic of Not Giving an F, I'll just leave it at that because um, I try, try to not curse in public. Um, and it says how to stop spending time you don't have doing things you don't want to do with people you don't like. I think that this to me is probably the number one book to read if you want to be successful right now. Because time management and prioritization is everything. And for a lot of us who are intuitive and feelers, we're not very well with time management. We procrastinate. Uh, we give our energy to people we shouldn't. Uh, you know, we care about things that aren't ours to care, care about. We give our emotional space to the people who mean us no well. It's their own issues. It's their own agendas that they're coming to the table with and things that we just don't own so we know that as therapists but I love the way she puts it um because she just breaks it down so simple like how to have a budget for it visualization exercises um how to really identify what it is that you do care about and how to spend more time doing that um she said well maybe you have neither the time nor the energy um but you do have twenty dollars but you're worried about what the other parents will think, you know, all these things that kind of contraindicate our, our purpose, our values, what we're supposed to be doing with our time and our energy. Uh, so I'll read the back of the book. It says, are you stressed out, overbooked, and un underwhelmed by life? Fed up with pleasing everyone else before you please yourself? And it's time to stop giving a F. This irrelevant and practical book explains how to rid yourself of unwanted obligations, shame, and guilt and give F's instead of people, instead to people and things that make you happy. From family dramas to having a bikini body, the simple not sorry method for mental decluttering will help you unleash the power of not giving an F and will free your, you to spend your time, energy, and money on things that really matter. So, like I said, I give this book out to a lot of people. Absolutely loved it. Bought it in England, read it on the plane, could not get enough of it. It's so funny. Um, I wish I were to highlight it. My favorite quote in here, I like to highlight my books. Um, but one of the things she talks about is she quit her job. She went to Harvard, you know, a really smart lady, went to Harvard, um, was working at this corporate firm, 
um, doing, I think, publish, publishing or something along those lines, maybe editing. And um, one day just decided, you know what, this is not it. This is not where I'm supposed to be, what I'm supposed to be doing. And although she was making a lot of money and a lot of people thought, you know, this is where she was supposed to be in life, um, she just decided, like, this ain't it. And I like it because she said she made a plan. You know, she got uh, her her uh, her plan in place as far as, like, how to leave. Um, but on her way out, the quote says, I was trying to find the exact quote. She said, I felt like um, I was going down the corporate ladder faster than a stripper on her last poll for the night. <laughs> and I love that statement because I was like, hey, man, like, you just know, walking out. I go, okay, well, there, there goes the ideal of success, right? And um, in most of society, what society says is success. Um, but she gave up that ideal of success to get her own ideal of success, which meant freedom, becoming a freelance writer, and, and living the life that she wanted to live. So, you know, she probably had no idea at the time that this book would be wildly successful as it is. Um, but I love that she just stepped out on faith and did her own thing and it worked and she's teaching other people how to do that. Another book that I love, 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 plan to write the author, plan to one day hopefully meet her, a brilliant, amazing person that I just adore and don't even know. Um, I've highlighted it in this book. I've read it over and over and over. When I feel like I'm off or something ain't right, I read it again. Um, I cry when I read it. I take notes. I journal. It's just, this is probably my absolute favorite book, to be honest. And it, I've heard people say they've met her or they've um, written her and she's written back. That's my dream. That's one of my dreams is to meet her and to discuss this book because I think it's a life-changing book. So here's the book. No Disrespect by Sister Soldier. Um, my favorite, absolutely hands down, my favorite book. I feel like everybody should read this book and reflect on it, think about it. Um, I'm not saying everything she says in the book I absolutely agree with, but I tell you what, it's hard to disagree with most of it. Um, and so, and, and I guess maybe just because I can relate to where she's coming from, and I think a lot of us can. Um, so I'll read the uh, just a brief back of it. It says, um, a rapper, activist, hip-hop rebel, Sister Soldier possesses the most passionate and articulate voice to emerge from the projects. Now she uses that unmistakable voice to deliver what is at once a fiercely candid autobiography and survival manual for any African-American woman who wants to keep her heart open and her integrity intact in 1990s America. Um, so she talks a lot about love. Um, it says her about love and each bears a controversial truth about the black condition in America. The disintegration of families, the unremitting combat between the sexes and the thousand and one ways in which racism continues to circumscribe the ways African-American people see themselves and treat one another. Um, like I said, even if you're not black, I think you should read this book. That's just my perspective on it. Um, I think that even Cornell West agrees with me. He says, Sister Soldier is one of the most eloquent and articulate spokesperson of her generation. Listen to her courageous and painful words in this book. And I think that's what I like so much about it is you can tell she's given herself, like her real authentic self. Um, there's a lot of emotion in the words and, and just kind of the concepts that she's talking about. You can tell these are things that she's lived. She's not telling you about what she heard. She's telling you things that she saw, that she felt. And I think a lot of us can relate to whether you're a man or a woman, if you're willing to admit. Um, and that's one of the things she says in the book is like, not everybody, um, she said her other strength is self-love. And one of the other strengths she talks about is her ability to look herself in the mirror and, and not lie to herself and to be honest and to call other people on their stuff when they're not being honest or not being true to who they are. And um, I just think that that's so important, like to be able to get to that point of self-love where you're unapologetic, unapologetically yourself and you are okay with people not accepting that. Um, so, yes, I probably need to reread it because it's probably about that time again. I think the last time I read it was back in November on the way from a plane ride. Um, 
another one of my favorite authors, but not as passionate about like Sister Soldier is everything to me. Just everything. So that's just that. Uh, another author that I love and adore, uh, Valerie Burton. I think she's got some really great books as well. This is the first book that I read of hers. Um, it says successful women think differently, but I think it also applies to men. Um, successful people think differently is what I think. So, yep. Nine habits to make you happier, healthier, and more resilient. That's another one that I often uh, refer to patients. Um, one that I've been hearing about over and over and over and over for years. And I finally said, what is it about this book? Why is everybody talking about this book and this author? Um, so The Alchemist by Paolo Coelho. Um, I finally read it uh, right after my surgery about two months ago. Um, actually, a month ago. And I will say it was a life-changing book. So much that I've journaled on it. Um, kind of confirmed exactly where I am in my life right now. Um, very, very, very much highly, highly recommend this book. Uh, especially for a lot of the people in our group, because I feel like we are, a lot of us are probably at that stage where we're trying to figure out, okay, what's my greater purpose in life? I know I'm a therapist. I know I'm doing th great things, but what else? If that's the question that you're asking yourself, um, how to tackle your fears, how to move to that next level. This is a really good book. It's more like a spiritual book. Um, it is fiction, which I was a little bit surprised. I went into the library and said, oh, where's this section for Paulo Coelho? I'm looking at nonfiction. And she's like, it's fiction. Duh. <laughs> and I was like, well, I don't read fiction. And she was right. Like, yeah, it's fiction. Um, but it's so real. Like, the uh, concepts are so life-based. And... Um, you just learn a lot from all of his books, actually. So much that I've read another one of his books on audio and now reading another one currently um, of his books. Oh, I think all of his books are great. I haven't picked up anything yet that isn't amazing and hasn't added to my life. So I would totally recommend all of his books. Um, another one of my favorite authors, favorite people in the world. It was on my list to meet her, uh, Maya Angelou. This book right here got me through Ghana. Um, culture shock and all. Ghana, I love, love, love Ghana. Um, my time there was super amazing. But initially when I got there, it wasn't everything that I imagined it would be, of course. Um, because things are never as you expect. That's why they tell you not to have expectations. Um, but I like the fact that I was able to pick up this book. Um, I think I had it mailed to me from like half price books or something um, while I was in Ghana. This book is called All God's Children Needs Traveling Shoes. I wholeheartedly agree with that concept. I was talking the other day with a friend about just what travel does to you, um, how it makes you different, how it changes your life. And he was saying that he believes that travel opens your heart and opens your mind. Best way to say it. And you are required to step outside of everything you know um, and be in a different environment, a different place. Physically and mentally, it really does something to you that when you get home, you're probably not the same. So I, I love all of her autobiographies, but this is one of my favorite just because of where I was at the time and because I'm passionate about travel. So it's one of the ones that I keep kind of, I have a top shelf of my little library in there and I keep that, those, these books in the top shelf. Um... Another person that I'm really growing, falling madly in love with right now is Brene Brown. Um, I'm sure you guys are not surprised by that. She's a fellow social worker, uh, researcher, though. <laughs> um, I'm not real excited about research for those of you guys who know me, but I'm starting to get a little bit more interested in it, which is surprising. Um, I'm starting to understand that you can't have practice without research. You can't have policy without research. Um, and I'm starting to gain a better appreciation for it, I think, especially because it's so limited in our community. Um, but this one is called Rising Strong. Um, if we are brave enough, often enough, we will fall. This is a book about what it takes to get back up. And so I think, you know, on those days when I'm discouraged or I'm frustrated with something, um, it's good. I, if you can see, I've got stuff tabbed off. Another book that I've made highlights in, I think, uh, maybe not, but just some tabbed off things I like to go back to and kind of meditate on and last but not least the most recent purchase 
Um, I have met this author in real life and it was amazing uh, meeting her and I've been emailing back and forth with her and I'm hoping uh, that we'll be able to have her at a BTR event in the near future because I think she's super talented. So I had a magazine somewhere. Uh, she blogs for a magazine called Psychologies, which is a European magazine. It's kind of like the equivalent of um, like the APA magazine, the counseling uh, magazine, things like that, right? Um, so her name is Jackie Holder. And this book is called Be Your Own Best Life Coach. Uh, so she teaches a lot of classes. She's a life coach, obviously. Um, and she teaches a lot of classes from the magazine um, about, like, she's very into narrative therapy, um, writing. She's got several books on how to heal yourself through writing. And then she does workshops. So I went, got the chance to go to one of her workshops um, shortly after my surgery and took lots of notes and was just so blessed by it. Cause, because I'm really interested in finishing up the book that I'm writing. And she gave us a lot of tips on kind of how to get out of your own way, um, how to tap into your deeper emotions that you may have blocked out of defense mechanism and coping, um, but how to tap into those for the writing process and to um, really get in tune with what it is, the message that you want to relay. So I'm hoping to get her at one of our events here soon. We've been talking about it and coordinating, and I think that she could be a, a real blessing to all of us to just hear, number one, her journey. That was what I asked her to share, to talk about how she got the opportunity to be a blogger for, you know, a national magazine, is a, to me, is a huge thing. Um, and the things that she writes about in the magazine is really amazing. So, um, And then also the skills and the, the um tools that she gave us as far as like how to write your way, whether it be for healing purposes or to write a book, whatever it is, and then for you to be able to teach those things to your clients as well. So I think on multiple levels, she's going to be very beneficial if we're able to make that happen. So this video has been a little bit longer than my typical videos, and I um, will be very surprised if anybody has stayed to the end, but if you have, thank you. Um, because I do feel like that last one is going to be a treat to all of us when and if we get to experience that. So those are some of my favorite books. I know you'll only ask me for five. That was hard for me. <laughs> Even getting it down to seven was hard for me. Um, but I, those are books that I really, really, really wholeheartedly recommend for every therapist. All of my clients, like I said, um, have enjoyed them. The ones that I've recommended to uh, clients as well. If you're a reader... I'm your girl. Ask me what I'm reading. Let's talk about it. Give me feedback. What are some books that you guys are reading that you think I might enjoy? 